Hello, hello, guys. Praise God, man. Wonderful to be here tonight. Last night is the anniversary of when Jesus died. Wednesday. He died on a Wednesday. And guys, this year's calendar of April 1st happened to be Nissan 1st. This is exactly the exact dates that are happening now on our calendar are the exact dates that happened while Jesus was going through Passover that whole week. It's incredible, man. God is amazing. He's awesome. And we need to understand what's, what, what that means right now. That means on the 10th of Nisan, when they inspected the lamb, was the 10th of April. On the 14th of Nisan, when Jesus died, was yesterday into today. Today's the 14th, right? So it was at, at night at 6 p.m. on the 13th is the 14th. That's when he died. And right now is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And that reminds us, have you gotten all the leaven out of your life? Have you quit sinning? Have you quit saying, oh, Jesus will forgive that. Let me just dive deep into this sin. The Bible tells us in Romans chapter 6, verse 1, that God forbids that kind of thinking. He forbids it. I'm going to go ahead and sin because he'll forgive it. He's already forgiven it. We need to live our life and say, hey, you know what, Jesus? I don't want to sin. I want to quit sinning because he gave us the feast of unleavened bread to remind us of himself. He is the one. He is the body without sin. He is the bread of life that has no sin in him, no leaven in him. And now he's called us unto himself. He has saved us. He's taken all of our sin upon himself, all of it. I am no longer, no longer held guilty or responsible for my sin. It's all on Jesus. So now what am I going to do with that? Shall I continue in sin that I can just keep receiving this forgiveness and grace that God has overwhelmed me with? God forbid. That's what the Bible says. God forbids that kind of thinking. Well, what, what should we do? We talked about that last week. Jesus is the Passover lamb. He's the bread of unleavened bread. No leaven, no sin in him, right? And so he is the perfect lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He's holy. And last night, on the 13th, 14th is when he died. And right now, 14th, 15th, he is in the grave. Unleavened bread without sin. Now then, we look at the seven feasts of God and we begin with Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits. That's Sunday. Sunday is first fruits. Resurrection morning. Okay? These are the biblical names for them. The satanic name for Sunday is Easter. Do not call first fruits resurrection morning Easter. That is satanic and pagan in origin, and even until now. And it is applied unto a ritual of the Catholic Church. They're the ones who really push Easter, Easter, Easter. And we don't say that word. We say Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits, the feast of first fruits of the resurrection. When the first fruits are offered to the Lord. And Jesus, we are told, is the first fruit of all those who will resurrect from the dead. And remember, there are several resurrections to come. We have the Pentecost resurrection of the church. All the, those who have died in the past 2,000 years since Jesus uh, rose from the dead and since Pentecost of A.D. 30, all those believers who have died, they will raise from the dead, and we are going to have a resurrection of the living. We, the live, will be caught up together with the dead to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. The dead will be made alive. We who are alive, we're all going to receive our new glorified bodies. We can't enter God's home, God's heaven, without these glorified bodies. So we're going to receive our glorified bodies, and we're going to head into his home, and it's going to be a time of rejoicing and wonderment and awesomeness, okay? And that's going to happen on the Feast of Pentecost. That's the first resurrection. Then seven years later, when Jesus comes back 
on, this is where everybody gets it wrong. Please listen to me. This is where everybody gets it wrong because they don't take into consideration the church age. The church, we are a whole different unit that nobody ever knew about. We were a parenthesis, a special parenthesis to the heart of God. God always knew we existed, but nobody else did. None of the prophets, no writers, nobody knew that we were a special called out group. We are the bride of Jesus. I had some woman tell me last night, she rebuked me on, I, I can't remember whose group it was, Jan Markell's or somebody's. We are not the bride of Christ. Nowhere in the Bible does it say we're the bride of Christ, blah, 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 blah. Folks, we're the bride of Christ. Okay, we're the bride of Christ. Song of Solomon alludes to it. The Bible codes tell us that. We are the bride of Christ. The church is the bride. Over and over in the Bible codes, it says we are the bride of Christ. Aren't you thankful for that? So Jesus is the first fruits of all those who would resurrect from the dead. The church is the second group, the next group who will resurrect from the dead, the past 2,000 years of believers. At the end of the seven-year tribulation, all the people who died during that seven-year tribulation and all the Old Testament saints from Adam all the way until uh, Jesus rose from the dead, whoever died in that meantime, and I, I believe, I believe, guys, that the thief on the cross will be the first New Testament one to raise from the dead. Remember me when you go into your kingdom, okay? I, I believe he's part of the uh, New Testament bride. First one, probably, you know, officially, who died, the dead in Christ. And so everybody who dies during the seven-year tribulation and all those who had died for the first 4,000 years since creation, they will all rise at the end of the seven-year tribulation. Then we'll have a thousand year millennium where Jesus is king and the humans will still be here on earth uh, repopulating according to his command, his creation program, his plan altogether. And people will be dying during that time, but they will live longer. The Bible says that a person who dies during the millennium, if he dies at 100 years of age, people will say, oh, he was so young. So we're going to have our longevity back just like Methuselah. You know, he lived almost a thousand years. 969 years. So the lifespans are going to be like that in the millennium, but people will still die during that time. At the end of the millennium, all those who died during the millennium in Christ Jesus are considered the first resurrection. That's what you read in Revelation. And this is where everybody gets it wrong who gets it wrong. They say there's no resurrection until the end of the millennium. And the first resurrection is, you know, the of the saved and the second resurrection is for the lost. Well, they got it right, but what they're missing is that is only for those who died during the millennium. Everybody else has resurrected. Well, let's go through that again. Jesus is the first fruits of all those who would resurrect. He was the one who made it possible for us to have a resurrection. Then, right now, we believe two months, less than two months now at the Feast of Pentecost, it's very possible. It's going to be on the Feast of Pentecost, and we think this one is a very good one for it to happen on. He's going to resurrect all those who have died in Christ Jesus for over the last 2,000 years since Christianity started, since the Holy Spirit fell in the book of Acts chapter 2, okay, until the present. But there's a bunch of us who are living, you and I. I pray that you are truly saved. What does that mean? Your faith is totally in Jesus and his finished work and not in you. You realize that you are a sinner. You are not like him. You are not unleavened bread. Your life is filled with leaven, with sin, with atrocities, with everything around us is filthy. And I, we're in need of a savior. And so a preacher came to us somehow, some way. It could have been your mama. It could have been the pastor of your church. And they taught you about the, your need for a savior. And his name is Jesus Christ. God came from heaven left all the riches and the glories of heaven to come to this earth to become poor so that we, if we would put our faith in him, could become rich in heaven. He who was rich became poor so that we, through his poverty, could be made rich by faith. It's all by faith. I believe I'm a sinner in need of a savior, and I believe Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection, his blood is the only thing that can wash me clean and make me pure in the eyes of God. And his righteousness will be imparted, imputed into me. And I believe that by faith. And the only way that can happen is by believing. You can do no work. If you think you're going to add a work to it, you're lost. And if you're listening to me, I pray that you're just a believer. You have placed faith only in Jesus Christ and, and your trust is only in his faithfulness. 
Your faith is in his faithfulness. So Jesus was the first fruit of all those who would resurrect from the dead. The next group is the Christian body, the dead and the living. We will be resurrected and we'll come back seven years just after Jesus raises all those who died in Christ Jesus during that seven-year period. He's going to raise only those who were faithful to him and believed in him. He's going to raise them, and then we're all going to come back together with him. And that's on the Feast of Trumpets, guys. Everybody says, oh, the rapture's on the Feast of Trumpets. The, and, and Mark Biltz is this guy. And I have, I have written him so many times on his sermons, and I keep getting deleted. I'm like, Mark, you got it wrong, bro. You got it wrong, bro. The rapture for the bride is Pentecost. The, the resurrection for the tribulation saints is trumpets. Okay? And then we're all going to come back and we're going to reign and rule with Jesus Christ of Nazareth as he is the physical king of a physical kingdom all throughout the earth. And he will be the king of all kings and the lord of all lords. And there will be governors and there will be presidents and there will be other countries still existing. We're told that. But Jesus Christ will be the king of all those kings. And they will come to Jerusalem twice a year to come see Jesus. They're going to come on Passover to remember that he was the one who made all this possible during the millennium. And they're going to come on the Feast of Tabernacles. And they are both one-week events. The Feast of Unleavened Bread is a week, and the Feast of Tabernacles is a week. One is in March, April, and the other is in September, October. Every year, the kings of the earth will come and they will meet their king and they will bow and they will do all the reverential uh, game plan of God on these two feasts. Whatever happens on unleavened bread will happen then and whatever happens in the Feast of Tabernacles will happen then. And the Bible says, and if people, if the kings will not come up and their people, the princes will not come up and honor the Lord, they are going to have famine in their lands during the millennium. And they will have no rain in their lands during the millennium if they have rebellious hearts during the millennium. Okay? God says all this. Then that whole thousand-year period, there will be people dying. And when, and then at, toward the end, probably the last Shemitah, the last seven-year period or 14-year period, I don't know. But it'll be seven or 14 most likely because God deals with seven-year increments called Shemitah cycles. Okay? And so at the end of the millennium, Good night. Let me pause this. My, my sermon come on here. Boom. All right. At, at the end of the millennium, just before the end, Satan is released from hell with his devils to stir the humans who are still here who had lived for the thousand years. And there's going to be a rebellion. There's going to be some people who say, no, I'm serving Jesus, man. Uh -uh, no rebellion for me. And there's going to be a bunch that says rebellion for me, man, because the heart of man is rebellious. And there's going to be an uprising at the end of the millennium, and there will be two sides drawn. And Jesus is going to kill everybody on the wrong side. And then once he does that, there's going to be the great white throne judgment. And what he's going to do is call everybody to resurrection who died in him, who believed in him, who were faithful to him during that thousand-year period. That's called the first resurrection. Then he's going to call everybody who was evil over the whole entirety of the existence of mankind from Cain all the way to the last person in that rebellion to Satan. The 7,000 years of humanity, all evil humanity, will be judged at the, at, um, together at the same time, and that's called the second resurrection. So let's, let's get our terms right. The first resurrection in the book of Revelation is not everybody. It's only the people who were righteous during the millennium. The second resurrection in the book of Revelation is all the evil of all time who are going to be judged at the great white throne judgment and they will be cast into the eternal lake of fire with Satan and all the evil people. Okay, that's God's game plan. And then there's going to be those humans who lived through, who decided that they were not going to rebel. They were going to stay faithful to Jesus. And you'll read about them. Vondo has placed uh, Isaiah 66, 21 to 24 there. You'll want to know those verses. Okay? And that is where Jesus allows the humans to continue on forever. He destroys death at that final judgment. Death is the last enemy that shall be destroyed. So man can't die from that point on. And God gives them such great incentives not to rebel again. He opens up hell, the eternal lake of fire, 64 times 
every year on the way to church. Every Sabbath day, when people are getting ready to go worship the Lord in his high mountain, he opens up hell beneath their feet. I don't know if it's like uh, the earth just go, turns into a glass ball and everything below their feet is hell. It's going to be something like that. And they're going to see the, the corpses. They're going to see the souls of the wicked people who died. And they're going to see their miseries. And they're going to see their pain. And they're going to see their torment. And they're going to be like, I'm going to stay faithful to the Lord Jesus. Let's go to church. And you know what's missing in the church today? Hell. The preachers don't preach hell anymore. So the people live like hell. They don't fear hell. They don't fear fire. They don't fear judgment. They don't fear God. Because the preachers have quit presenting hell. If they had read Isaiah 66 and understand that it's in the heart of God to present hell every week to sinners, he's going to be doing it every week to the righteous forever and ever and ever and ever. How much more should the wicked see hell so they will repent? And the church today has quit presenting hell. And then guys like me who present hell, people come and say, oh, he's just so, he's, he, I don't like listening to him. He, he doesn't edify. That preacher, he, he don't encourage. I'm encouraging you not to go to hell right now. I'm encouraging you to understand that hell is real, fire is hot, it's eternal. And if you choose to go there, I will be watching you every Saturday. God will probably let me see you who rebelled listening to this sermon. And you'll see me. I may not see you, but you'll see me. You'll see me and every other preacher you laughed at and said no to. When we preach to you grace, salvation by grace through faith, it is not of yourself. And you laughed and said, no, it's of my works. I'm going to go ahead and honor Sabbath keeping. I'm going to honor the dietary menu of the Jews. I'm going to do a whole lot of works to prove my love to God, and he'll accept me then. I'll see you in hell. Most likely, I won't, but you'll see me. And the preachers who tried to warn you, we opened up hell for you every time we preach. If they do it right, they'll open up hell every time they preach. And we'll also open up heaven and invite you to heaven and say, man, Jesus is our goal. Jesus is everything. He's awesome. He saved you. You don't have to go to hell. He, he came to keep us from going there. Hell is your default, but you don't have to go there. That's balanced preaching. And then we throw in some verses. Oh, man, have you guys seen, have you guys seen this whole watch the water thing? You need to. In short, it is proof that the coronavirus is snake venom. Do you know that the Holy Spirit led Sean Mitchell in his Bible codes 27 months ago to declare that in his Bible codes, that it is snake venom? Everybody, it, it came from Wuhan, China, and it was in the markets, and it was the bats. John didn't find bats. He looked all over for bats, ding bats, slow bats, fat bats, Louisville bats. He didn't find any bats in that belfry. You know what he found? He found snakes. Snakes and venom. And from the saliva, that's venom. He saw it all coming 27 months ago. 26 months ago, he produced a Bible code. And you'll find all these Bible codes. I'm about to, I'm about to go through every one of our um, coronavirus codes right now. And you can find them at our Fault Line Bible Study page. It's the third or uh, it's the last category down, I believe. We've added new categories. Oh, by the way, you want to have, if you're not a friend of Sean Mitchell and or Bible Codes Unsealed, you want to friend him tonight because that Bible code that he's about to present tomorrow is huge. Okay? Be looking for his Bible code tomorrow. Okay? I'm encouraging you in that. You're hearing a fresh word from the Lord if you'll do that. Guys, Jesus commanded, he promised, he said, if you will follow these Bible codes, you will conquer. If you poo-poo these Bible codes, you know what he said about people who poo-poo the Bible codes? He said they're wicked and an abomination unto him. 
you know, if you, if you had read your Bible closely, and, and I, I trust that you listening to me have, if you had read your Bible closely, you know that God, even in the very first books, Exodus, Leviticus, requires that there's always two witnesses to prove a point. Two or three witnesses. That's what it says. At least two. Don't you know that he said that because that's what he has in his scriptures? You see, the first witness is the plain text. The second witness is the Bible code. The third witness is the one we're going to see in heaven, the mind blower. But God wouldn't require that of me if he hadn't already done it himself. He only requires in us the things that he has in himself. Vondo has put up the link. Follow along. Go, go to your Bible codes. And we're going to start, I think it's in order. I think we're starting in order. I'm going to start with the very first one, coronavirus Wuhan. Okay, God told us from the start what was going on. Let's follow faithfully. It says, Corona, the virus, China. Now, guys, the whole virus thing is a lie. Okay, the whole germ theory is a lie. We got the virus here because that's what they're calling it. That is their name for it. Okay, the coronavirus. You know what corona is, is crown. A king cobra. They've been telling us the whole time, uh, corona 19, a cobra's venom has 19 proteins in it that attack and destroy certain organs in the human body. Hello. King Cobra 19. They've told us the entire time that this was a snake bite. And here's how it works. You got to see, see the uh, documentary before they shut it down called Watch the Water. Watch the Water. Okay, it's in the water. Now, They've taken the venom from crate snakes and from cobras, and they have freeze-dried them, and they have powderized them, turned them into powder, and they have mixed that powder in the mixes of fluoride powder that they dump into your water in your water treatment systems. So it's in your water treatment systems at your faucet, at your sink. It's in bottled water. They're putting it everywhere. They're putting it in your chemtrails. You know, the rain. We warned you and warned you and warned you. Do not let your children eat the snow. And those of you, and I know you've heard me say it. You show videos of your kid eating snow cones. You're eating snake venom. And not only is it just snake venom, it has RNA in it. RNA rewrites DNA in your body. And it makes its way into your cells. And what it is doing to your cells is producing, your, it's causing your body to produce more snake venom inside of itself. That's why some people just die horrendous deaths. Shaking, you know, like snake bites. Their throat swelling shut, thyroid. And these proteins attack different organs in different parts of the body. One protein will attack your pancreas. One protein will attack your kidney. One protein will attack your liver. It's all intended to kill you. And the venom from one snake will create incredible blood clots. I have a dear friend who died in agonizing pain because she got the shot and blood clots were all in her body. And she was crying out on Facebook how, how this pain is so terrible and so miserable and she just wants to die. And she did die. Praise God, she's in heaven. Do you guys know that God doesn't call this a virus. You know what he calls it? He calls it a plague. And he says it's from him. He is the God of plagues. Remember down there in Egypt, Pharaoh and all them? Remember, you know, the book of Revelation and all the plagues that come, they come from him. And what you're watching is the very first precursor of all the plagues. It's a precursor of all the plagues, and it's a precursor of the mark of the beast. Because that also includes snake venom. This is from a snake. The mark of the beast is going to have the DNA of a dragon in it. Which is a snake with feet. Satan is both the serpent and the dragon. The serpent is the deceiver, the subtle one. The dragon is the fiery one who will come at you and kill you. One comes at to you in the form of Lucifer and sweetness and niceness and movies and... Uh, nice little sayings on your Facebook that have nothing to do with God. 
You'll have this cute little positive saying, and then at the bottom, the, the person who quoted it, and that person's a demonic, demon-possessed, pagan fool. Christians, don't you dare have quotes from pagan, satanic, God-hating fools on your Facebook. God's watching. He's a-coming. He's looking for the blood. That's what he's looking for. First Bible code, Corona, the virus, China. It was in the saliva. It's a disease. It came in the year 2020. And the carrier, there was verification of the carrier. It starts in China. It starts in Wuhan. It starts in the animal. It starts in the animal. In Wuhan. And it's USA approved. It's very infectious. It's very deadly. And it came from the east. It came to us from the east. And it creates death. And it's going to be a, an outbreak over the whole earth. The people of China will panic. They're doing it again. Have you seen China? They have 193 million people on lockdown. And they are starving them to death in their own homes. Have you seen that? Or are you too busy watching the Easter Bunny and the rabbits and all the eggs? They're panicking, they're freaking out in the streets right now, and you better come to know it, and you better pay attention to God's word. God is saying this. This is his word. It's coming from the east, going to bring death. They're going to call it a virus, 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 virus. It's coming from China, and it began in the markets, and it will create the panic. Let's go on to the next one. This one is called Coronavirus Weaponized. I was standing, I was getting ready to go punch out at work and there were some guys standing in a circle and they were leaders at work, directors and managers. And one of the directors stopped me and said, hey, Johnny boy, he's not a believer. He's not a believer in Jesus Christ. He said, what do you think this whole thing is? And Sean had just, just produced this Bible code a day or two before that question was asked. And I'm always praying, Lord, please help me to be your voice, your minister, your light on my job. And they asked me, hey, because they know I research all the time. They know I don't watch television. They know I study. They, they know this at my work. So he asked me, he said, what do you think this is? I said, um, it is a bioweapon created in a laboratory in Wuhan, China. U.S. sanctioned bioweapon. And they all were just quiet. They were all laughing and hoo-hawing and talking about it, what it was. And when I said that, they all went quiet. And my boss said, I can see that. And I punched out and left. Right after this truth from God came out. What does it say? Oh, there's that virus again. It's in both corners. You'll see it in the top left and almost toward the bottom right. Virus, virus, virus. It's the virus. It's coronavirus bioweapon. Bio it's very mysterious. It came from the Chinese market. That's the story, Chinese market. It came from Chinese laboratories and dissipated at the Chinese market in the form of probably some kind of mist. Your skin is the largest organ in your body, and that skin of yours can absorb, you know, a snake bite, venom. Oh, how about in the meantime, what was going on in the meantime during this whole outbreak? Remember the two Venom movies? Venom, Venom, Venom. Everybody kept saying Venom, 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 and then calling this thing a virus. They were telling us what it was. And you were there rooting, eating your popcorn and sucking down your Diet Coke with your Twizzlers, enjoying Venom the whole time. It's a disease. It'll break out, and its purpose is for death. There will be a revolt and things will erupt. It's happening again right now. 193 million. That's two-thirds of the United States almost. It's a bioweapon. It was weaponized by the snake. Do you see that in the far right-hand corner? The snakes. It's snake venom. Not bats. Snakes. There'll be an outbreak, and it is released on the public beginning at that market. It's from Wuhan. It's in the animal. It will dis be disseminated across the entire world. Let's look at the next one. This is the third one down. 
COVID-19, a foundation of many announced and declared. A foundation of many. Hmm, is that the United Nations? Let's see. It'll be a great threat. It'll come at the end of days. So what does that tell us? COVID-19 comes at the end of days. So we're where now? The end of days? I'm with you. And the virus will be declared. Oh, there's a virus. It's a threat. And surely there is a threat. And it'll be dispersed to a multitude from the United Nations. They're all in on it, folks. They want you dead. The Georgia Guidestones allows for a half a billion to live, and you ain't in that family bloodline. You get to die. So they're going to kill you. How many of them up there in Washington, D.C. did you see just, oh, man, they walking around like they had COVID real bad. We heard a story here or there. He's got it. She's got it. But they just as healthy as they could be. You know why? Because they walk around with anti-venom. They got the anti-venom. When the chemtrails is over them, they can sit out there at their French little cafe and just eat outdoors and have no worries. And they can drink all the water and supplies they want. And all the medicine that the CDC warned us, don't take this with that, don't, are all anti-venom medicines. All of them. Everything that they said do not take is anti-venom and will keep this thing from harming you. All of them. Genesis 11.1, 1, and the whole earth was of one language and one speech. The computer, Google Translate. Everybody can understand what everybody says. Translate this post. Click. I just understood what that Chinese guy said. I just understood what that Spanish-speaking fella said. I just understood what that French-speaking woman said. This Africanus. I heard it all. I can understand it. This Russian. Click a button, boom, and we all speak one language. The computer. You know, computers get viruses, right? It's a respiratory issue. It's unknown. Well, we knew what it was because in the code before, Sean already said it came from the snakes and it was dissipated. It was dissimulated right there at the market. Have at it. Y'all die. And from there, it went to Italy. You know, they get chemtrails too. They can spray whatever town they want to spray. Fog. If you ever are walking in fog and breathing that, that's a snake bite. Sure enough, that thick fog you can't see through, that the chem trailer shot through the night and you get up in the morning, go walk through it. It's a snake bite. It's venom. Oh, venom. He's my favorite character. Build the ritual, pal. Oh, and it pursued. The Chinese fled. God, listen to God. The, the United Nations says this, I will give the plague. The United States says this, I will give the plague. But it's actually God who gives the plague. The foundation of many thinks they did it. This is God doing it. Okay? God has allowed this to happen. This is a precursor to what's happening. And it says it happened in the year 2020. The virus will be declared. It's unknown. It's a threat. It's a time of disaster. Let's look at the next one. Number four. The corona pandemic. That's all it says in this Bible code. The corona, that is the crown, the king cobra pandemic. Obama thinks he's the king cobra. He's the king snake. And one day, the dragon will enter him, and they'll have their run for about three and a half years, and then they're going to show up and meet the king of kings and lord of lords, you know, the god of pandemics, the god of plagues. And God's servants, his two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, will plague these guys for three and a half years. I love it. God is the God of plagues. And truth is a plague to people who hate truth. They will leave your church and they'll shut your radio station off and they'll quit watching your videos when you become a plague to them. Jeremiah 2.22. Hmm, that's quite a year right now. 2022. Get rid of that zero. For though you can wash yourself in nitre, you got to wash your hands. That's what they kept saying. got to wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Keep yourself washed, 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 washed. And take much soap, yet your iniquity is marked before me, says the Lord God. You can wash up, but the sinners are still sinners. And the righteous who've been made righteous in the blood of the Lamb are still righteous. And this King Cobra pandemic has taken over. And God says, you ain't going to wash it off of your hands. When I give you a plague, you ain't washing this thing off your hands. Next. 
says, COVID-19, Psalm 56.3, the day that I'm afraid, I will put my trust in thee. This is for us Christians. When it's all around us, the snakes are biting, boom, 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 the air you're breathing, the water you're drinking, it's in everything, and it's in the people around you. The day that I'm afraid, I just put my trust in you. I'm not going to be afraid. COVID-19. The 19 protein spikes in a cobra bite. Next one. COVID-19. Jesus is our doctor. Physician Jesus. He's the one who will take care of it. If you have been bit by this thing or will be bitten by this thing, he'll take care of us. Jeremiah 31, 17. And there is hope for your future, saith the Lord. We don't fear when we have Jesus. This thing doesn't freak us out. Do not fear. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Do not be harmed. Where are we teaching this now? Because there's coming an uptick of the new variant. Oh, they're going to try to freak us all out. It's a snake bite. And the Lord... Our God is a physician, the great physician, Jesus Christ. Trust in him. Do not be afraid of COVID-19. Next one. Oh, there's a plague coming, the epidemic of 2020. At this time, it's called Corona, King Cobra. Look how many red lines there are, are, are red characters in that line. Incredible. It's a precursor. This is not the mark of the beast. Guys, Joseph Aquaviva is the mouth of the devil right now. He's the guy who trusts in numerology and Kabbalah practices to speak to him and tell him what's truth and what's not. He is saying right now, he has always said that this is the mark of the beast. This is the mark of the beast. And when I told him he's a fool and the mark of the beast is it employed until the middle of the tribulation after the rapture, he, you know, blocked me. Right now, he's preaching, oh, this guy that's talking about this snake bite, he's a liar. Why? Because he has to defend his lie. He starts every one of his videos with, believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the short gospel, and then he goes right into Satan's communication. Gematria, numbers, numerology, telling us his side of the story. You can't make this stuff up. The guy's a devil, and he doesn't even know it. He won't even take rebuke. The fool will not take rebuke. This is a precursor. And I told him that. I showed him this Bible code. I showed him what God said, and he blocked me. This is not a precursor. I got another guy who's got four different groups. He's telling everybody this is the code. I said, he says, I'm looking for the verse where it says this is a precursor. And I showed him this one, and he blocked me. Right here, this is the Bible. It says this is a precursor. This is not the the, the real deal. This is not the death blow. This is not the point of no return. This is not the mark of the beast. This is a precursor to that. Happened in the United States. Behold, there's a crisis. United States, those in the West and those in the East are seized with terror. But not you and me. We know. We have known for 27 months what this thing is. We have known for 26 months that Jesus is our helper. We've already known that, but in the Bible code it was presented. That he's our serum. Why in the world would God use that word? That's going to be our last one we look at tonight. Why would God say that Jesus is our serum? Because he knows that this is a snake bite needing a serum. And the only serum that can fix it is Jesus Christ himself, our great physician. No need to fear. No need to worry. Trust in him. Walk in him. Walk under the shadow of his almighty wing. Behold, it's a great crisis. It's in the United States. It's a precursor. The epidemic of the year 2020 at this time is the King Cobra. God's telling us the crowned one. The crowned one of all snakes is the cobra, the king cobra. Continuing on. The next one, this is called DNA spirals. Jehovah. Every one of us in, in, in our bodies have the 10, 5, 6, 5 spirals, DNA spirals in us. And that's the letters for yod heh vav Remember, Hebrew doesn't have numbers. It's alphanumeric. Alpha equals 1, Right? or Aleph, Aleph, Bet, you know, and going on all the way through their 22 letters is alphanumerics. And it tells us what, you know, that's how we find the years. That's how we find how many soldiers were in in the army. You won't see one, two, three, four, five. You'll see the Hebrew alphabet sitting there. And so all our DNA spirals show that God created us. God is in the mix of the 10, 5, 6, 5, Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey. See that five and five? That's Hey, hey, behold the hand, behold the nail. 
in our creation. God created us. We didn't evolve, and it shows it right here. It's Jesus the Messiah. The sequence was signed by God. He autographed the sequence of our DNA. God built us. He's in control. He loves us, guys. For the truth, even the validation, the hand of design from Jehovah himself, Jehovah himself. Oh, the evidence, the delights. Jesus, our creator, he begot into a living cell. God is in us. He created us by his own hand and he put his signature in our DNA. You will witness, you will testify. The scientific world needs to see this. They already see it, but they won't acknowledge it. The human construction, the hand of God designed it. DNA spirals, yod heh vav 10565 Look at that word down there at the very bottom. It says seed. Genesis 3.15, God used this word twice. He's looking at the snake. This is his curse at the snake. Remember this. This whole thing's about snake venom and the snake and the way the snake works into the dragon. We got the snake in the garden and we got the dragon coming down, falling at the last three and a half years of the tribulation because he is raging and mad and angry. He doesn't have to be subtle anymore. He's coming here to kill you. Same creature. The subtle one and the one who's not so subtle. The snake and the dragon. Seed. God looks at the snake and he says, I'm going to make enemies between you and the woman, Satan, snake. Your seed and her seed. Satan tried to wipe out all the Jews all the way back there in Egypt. He's killing all the babies. Remember when Moses was a little baby? Here comes Pharaoh says, kill all the boys. We're going to stop. We're going to stop the lineage of Messiah. And he couldn't. Then he tried to do it with Herod. Herod was going to kill all the babies when he heard about King Jesus versus King Cobra. We got the battle of two kings here. One is the God of all gods, and one is the God of this world. Satan is the God of this world, and he's blinded the minds of everybody in it. Until you hear the preacher preach about Jesus Christ, and you understand that you need a way out of hell, and Jesus is your only way. You no longer want to be part of the default. You want to be changed. You want to be a new creation. And it's trusting in the finished work of Jesus Christ, and his blood watches over us, and he then begins to grow in us his seed the seed of righteousness versus the seed we had previously the seed of sin and these are the battles between these two seeds the seed of wickedness and sinfulness humanity and the seed of righteousness jesus christ and humanity is in dire need of jesus christ and until humanity which is the wicked seed of sin until th that wicked seed is confronted with the awesome, glorious, wonderful, awesome, righteous seed of Jesus Christ and confesses that it needs this seed for change, for heaven, for goodness, for glory, for righteousness, to be identified with this seed and no longer this seed. And he believes. The whole battle has been about seed. The seed of God, the DNA spirals, the 10565 versus the seed of Satan, sin. God wants to revive your spirit. He wants to make it alive, and it's only in Jesus Christ and his seed. Continuing to the next one. A sign was pleasing. You will bring forth like God. Okay, this is the scientist. This is Fauci and all those guys. I am God. I will bring forth just like God. God brings life, and they say, and I will bring death. That's their inventions. And it says, a sign was pleasing. You'll bring forth like God. COVID-19, the 19 protein spikes of the King Cobra. Well, it's very satanic. And it's a government folly, the foolishness of our government. The Bible says, I had a guy tell me today, dude, you better be careful talking that stuff. People's going to think you're a conspiracy theorist. You'll be put on an FBI list. I said, I'm already on that list, dude. I'm at the bottom of everybody's pages i don't we don't get seen on facebook I, I got what like 33 hits on youtube now we know we've had more people stop by and see that than 33 they're killing our counts they're bringing us down because they don't want this truth brought out they want the seed of the serpent to continue on they want death they want people to become venom 
distributors inside their own bodies. They want people's bodies to kill themselves. That's why they keep adding booster after booster after booster. And it's a scheme, it's a plot of the foolish government. And for a time of disease, they're calling it a virus, but it's a great deception. It's, it came in the year 2020 from Wuhan. It's a plague from God. And it's covering all the nations. And it's all about the money, baby, financial. It came from China, and they are the great creator, satanic creator. God still says it's my plague. I'm letting those fools in that foolish government in the one world, whatever they want to call themselves, think that they're God. And they're coming up with this thing. But this ain't the mark of the beast. This is a precursor. He's telling us the story all the way through this thing. Because I'm the creator. I'm yod heh vav -Hey. I'm the 10565. There's two seeds. Who are you choosing? Choose you this day whom you're going to serve. As for me and my house, we're serving the Lord Jesus Christ. We've chosen the seed of righteousness, the seed of holiness, the seed of the beloved one, not the seed of the snake. Looking at the next one. China virus for a sign is a plague and the nation plotted. The year was 2019, 2020. Their ruler, a calamity with death, he initiated Wuhan for implementation of the world. Their ruler, the Chinese ruler, getting along with our ruler. Remember, it was Barack Obama and Fauci who went to China while Barack Obama was still president. Remember that. Don't ever forget that because he is the seed of the serpent. He is the final seed. When Jesus, when, when the father was talking to Eve and the snake in the garden, it was generalities being spoken. Your seed and her seed. But now we know here at the end times that his seed, Satan's ultimate seed, is all sinners. All sinners are of that seed, but the ultimate seed is the Antichrist, Barack Obama. And we know that the seed of the Lord Jesus Christ, the seed of the woman, is those who are saved by faith in her son, Jesus Christ, the ultimate seed. The ultimate seed on the enemy side is Barack Obama, and the ultimate seed on on the father's side is Jesus Christ. These are the two rulers. These are the two kings to be crowned. And Barack Obama is going to show up with a crown from the United Nations. He will be given a crown to rule. He's the King Cobra. And he'll be ruling for seven years. For three and a half years, he'll be the King Cobra. And the mid-trib part, the last three and a half, he'll become that dragon when the dragon himself enters him. Okay? He goes from the subtle, subtle one who wins everybody's heart, wins Israel's heart. It's the same subtlety that happened in the garden is the, the mojo he'll be working with the world when he becomes the world leader, the Secretary General of the United Nations. He's going to be very subtle and very sweet and very kingly, but he's still a snake until he becomes the dragon. And he becomes fierce, and, and he's going to start a slaughter fest like nobody has ever seen. Now, the slaughter fest will have been going on, but he's really going to kick it up notches at mid-trib and kill everything in sight. Okay? So what does that one say? It says the China virus. That's what they're calling it. That's what uh, the president called it. He named it the China virus. So Sean looked up China virus, and this is what he found. China virus, for a sign is a plague, the nation plotted. What nation? The United States, the United Nations plotted. China plotted. The entire world plotted in the year 2019, 2020. And their ruler, a calamity with death, he initiated Wuhan for implementation throughout the entire world. Now, something, something happened, guys, and we'll know about it. But Satan, Satanists always do something in ritual. So there was something about Wuhan. The, one of the main things about Wuhan is they have so many people who travel back and forth to northern Italy every day. We're talking thousands, okay, because of industry. And so that was probably their idea, the Vatican, Italy, all that jazz. And so there was a ritual. They had a ritualized choice of town. Satan chose the town. God chose the town. Okay, God's in charge of all. They can do all the rituals they want, but God is large and in charge. And so it was chosen. He initiated Wuhan for the implementation of the world. I'm going to say God did, and these guys think they did. Next one. He was proud of the scheme and the saliva. Obama, Xi from China. Fauci. 
He was proud of the scheme in the saliva, a pandemic of perplexity. What is this? What's going on? Oh, well, we know. Snake venom. And Jesus is our serum. We knew that the whole time. We were telling everybody that. We've been preaching that for over two years. And people have laughed at us when we present this Bible code to them. Laughed. Scorned. It's brought on by the United Nations. Their plan is for the RNA. Remember, RNA rewrites in the DNA. It makes itself into your cells and they can program it whatever they want. This particular program is to make your cells produce snake venom. So you'll die. And when you sweat, the snake venom will be making its way out to your body. And when people touch you, they will have been snake bitten. A beautiful plan of the devil. He's a snake. For their plan is in the RNA, the rewriting of your DNA to turn you into snake venom, personified. It's very controlling. It's, and from the crisis, they'll control everybody and they'll put everybody in lockdown. It's re-happening again. It starts in China first and makes its way around the world. And this, you're going to make everybody wear a mask and it's very misleading and deceptive. Corona, again, is the precursor. This crowned venom, this crowned King Cobra is a precursor to what? The dragon. The snake first, then the dragon. And the dragon is the mark of the beast. Year 2019. He was proud of the scheme in the saliva, the pandemic. Who was? Everybody that was at the United Nations. Let's look at that Bible verse. Proverbs 26, 18 and 19. A madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death. So is the man that deceiveth his neighbor and saith, Hey, I'm just, we're just in sport. We're just having a blast among ourselves. That's what's happening. This is what God sees in the middle of this whole thing. All these men casting firebrands and poisons and darts. And they're thinking it's funny and great. God doesn't. God's taking a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful record of it all. Yeah, watch the water. That's what it's called. Watch the water. And you can get it and download it because they're about to delete it all over the world. Especially when you got your Joseph Aquavivas, who's supposed to be Christian, poo-pooing it. And he's opposing this Bible code. All these Bible codes that we're reading. Opposing God. Let's look at the next one. The corona mask is a snare. The mask... God hates that mask. It is a snare. It is a trap. It has nothing to do with snake biting you. So when you get bit by a snake, you're going to go wear a mask. This is the truth we're telling you tonight. God hates that mask. It's just a matter of everybody obeying what the government, the liars say. The ones throwing the firebrands and the poison darts. Believing everything they say instead of God. They're putting their confidence in a man and not God. They have forgotten that every man is a liar. Let every ma let God be true and every man a liar. They've forgotten this and so they're believing man. Ah, they won't believe God in these Bible codes. The corona mask is a snare. He's going to die. If you don't wear your mask, you're going to die. You're going to die. And the fear and anxiety will rise within you. On this condition, we'll consent. We'll let you out of your house if you'll wear a mask. We'll let you go to the public park in God's creation if you'll wear your mask. Even if you've not been snake bitten, you need to wear your mask. And God says that thing is a snare. It's a trap. The whole head is sick and the whole heart is faint. And Satan is in the whole thing. Satan wants your face covered. Satan hates you because you're made in the image of God. Satan hates the human face. Satan hates babies' faces the worst. That's why he wants them dead before they ever exit the womb. He hates the face of us who are made in the image of God with God's DNA spirals within us. He hates it. He brings suffering. Oh, look at their kings. Kings of the United Nations and king cobras. They're all snakes up there, guys. They are of the seed of the serpent. And they have evowed themselves. They have paid homage. They have done the ritual. They have vowed themselves to Satan in his worship. Who? Your government. Kings and government have done all this. What does Psalm 129.4 say? The Lord is righteous. He hath cut us under the cords of the wicked. Aren't you thankful for that? The cords of the wicked is that mask. Get rid of it. Next time they tell you to wear it, God has cut it asunder. Get rid of that thing. 
It's for anxiety. It's a lie. They're laughing at you. They're turning you into a Muslim and making you cover your face, men and women. They're lying to you. Next one. COVID-19 and a man of expertise made it. Fauci. He was the king of AIDS. He designed it. He designed it here in the United States of America, and they walked over there because you can't make it here. Guys, that's what's going on in Ukraine right now. They're trying to kill all these bio labs that we've been a part of because the news has come out. They've got to destroy it all, all the evidence. And they got to make Russia the bad guy. Speaking of which, Putin is not Gog of Magog, and it will not be a Russian. Okay? It's Obama. Blow ye the trumpet of Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh and is nigh at hand. That's the tribulation. So when you see COVID-19, you got to understand that the tribulation is very near. Okay, we've had a two-year warning. And here it is. We now have less than two months, I would like to believe. COVID-19, a man of expertise made, and he said to me, go shut yourself in your house, lock down. This was all out here two years ago, guys. He hadn't made a COVID uh, Bible code in a long time. These have been here for a long time. But Jesus Christ is our faith, and we have faith in our Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Amen? Hallelujah. They say, lock yourselves in. Jesus said, hey, come on into your chambers, my little ones. So while they're locking us in, we know God's inviting us in. And while you're in there, why don't you shut your TV off and spend some time with the Lord Jesus Christ, getting his word, do some studying. Next one. Corona mutation, right? We're now at another mutation, right? On earth, the condition of the virus from the Lord. The Lord has appointed, but his mercy endures forever. This plague is from God, but he'll have mercy on whom he'll have mercy. He told us that all the way through the Bible. What is that bottom verse down there saying? Zephaniah 1.7, be silent in the presence of the Lord God for the day of the Lord is here. That's what he's telling you guys. This ought to bring us excitement and joy. What this means, what this corona thing means, what this king of snakes, king cobra venom thing means, what it means is the rapture's almost here. And that needs to lead us to rejoicing because his mercy endures forever. You see those two crosses on there? Beautiful. Next. The mandatory mask is against the witness, the word of Jehovah. It was misery. God hates that mask on you. Satan wants it on you to cover up God's glory, God's shine. You're made in his image. Satan hates that. And when they tell you to put it on again, don't you dare do it. And don't you dare think it's keeping you safe. You've been snake bit. How's a mask going to help you with a snake bite? The year 2021, 20, caught in the snare. It's a trap, guys. This whole thing is a trap for you to believe the devil and his lies and the United Nations and Nimrod over Jesus and what he says and what he's up to. He said, this is not the mark of the beast. He said, it's a precursor. Who are you going to believe? He said, it's a snake bite way before everybody else did. They said it was all from the bats. God said, it's a snake. And Sean presented that to us 27 months ago. God showed this to him in January, 27 months ago. The verse Ecclesiastes 9.12, for man also knoweth not his time as the fishes that are taken in an evil net as the birds that are caught in the snare. So are the sons of men snared in an evil time when it faileth or falleth suddenly on them. Don't be in the trap. Don't believe their lies. You believe Jesus on this. You go with him. You follow him. You believe him. He is our physician. He is our guide. He's the one who brings plagues, and he will not bring them nigh his people. He promised that in the Psalms. Aren't you thankful for that? He's got, he's good. We have a good God. Next one. RNA, that's the rewriting of your DNA. It makes itself into your cells, and it turns your cell into whatever it's been programmed to turn it into. A mutant. So instead of your cell being there to feed you and to be a good, good thing for you, it turns it into snake venom and starts mass producing in your body wherever this RNA has made its way. And that is both in the water droplets coming down. See, what, what happens is 
in the water, they give you the symptoms. They tell you what the symptoms are. Here's the symptoms. You'll feel this way. You'll feel this way. You'll feel this way. You'll have trouble breathing. And that's the protein that attacks your lungs. That's when you know which protein is hitting you. And you'll have problems with your kidneys. You'll have problems with your pancreas. And they tell you all the symptoms. And then, oh, no, I got to go get my shot. And then they just mainline you, man. They just pump you full of the snake venom. And we told you that. And we've even given you graphics with the snake with the two syringes coming out of his mouth as fangs. We said, do not get this bite. Do not get this thing. It's a snare, a trap of the devil. The marvel. Uh, what marvel? Venom? Venom? I don't know if he's Marvel or DC or whomever. But the marvel, a, the lot of a drug. Guys, that word poison right there is most of the time uh, venom. And this will be changed to venom. He's going to make it venom because of how clear it is now. It's not just, now we all know that venom is poison. But this is the, the clarity on this. More times when that word is used, it's a three-letter word in Hebrew. And when it is used, and Aramaic, when it is used, it is most termed venom. And so it says, RNA vaccine, the snare of Satan, the marvel, a lot of a drug, venom. With venom he deceived. The whole world's been deceived. It's snake poison, guys. Literal snake poison. Venom is marvel. Check that out, dude. It says the marvel. It's venom. God's put it right there in front of us. God loves us to search things out. Don't you find joy in this? It's a deception. At the very end, it says he deceived. He deceived with what? Marvel Comics. They're not comics at all. There's nothing comedic about them. They're cons. Last one. Check this out. I love this, guys. COVID-19 virus. The serum is Jesus. Why would he use the term serum? Because it's a snake bite. It's venom. Venom requires serum. And all the stuff the doctors tell you, don't take this, it's anti-venom. Anti-venom drugs, ivermectin and, and the like, zinc, all those things break down the venom in your body. Jesus is our serum. Aren't you thankful for that? Don't you believe that? His blood is the serum. His blood will make us whole. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, by faith, I believe in Jesus. He's my serum. They call it a virus. They call it a virus. The serum is Jesus. The word of the Lord. Turn to me. He says, I'm the I am. I'm your creator. I'm the Lord, your God. I will reveal truth to you. And Jesus, our creator, reveals what? That the serum is Jesus. The serum is Jesus. Psalm 91, 10 and 11. There shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Lean on Jesus. He's not going to allow the plague to come near you. Okay? Lean on him. Do not trust in doctors. Do not trust in the liars. Do not trust in your government. They're all liars. They are all snake bit themselves. And they do it, why? We read, for financial gain. For power. And they're all going to go to hell. Hey guys, let me give you real quick before we go a, a brand new code that Sean's been working on that he's not published yet. He's not even labeled it yet. It's incredible. Okay. The code is the same phrase in Revelation chapter one. It says the revelation of Jesus Christ or Yeshua, the revelation of Yeshua. Simple salvation and rest and comfort. It's talking about Sean. The purpose of the Bible codes is to bring revelation of Jesus Christ. And what does Sean do at the end of every Bible code? He gives us the simple plan how to be saved. And God acknowledges it right here. He says, the revelation of Yeshua, simple salvation, you'll find rest and comfort. And right in the middle of all that, and that's the main code. That, that's what the main code says. The revelation of Yeshua, simple salvation, rest and comfort. Boom, going down in the red line. Inside that red line coded is the word Mitchell. Right underneath of it, it says Sean, the Bible code. You know what God refers to him as? The skip laborer of Jehovah, the skip worker, the one who works all day long with skips for Jehovah. He's the skip laborer for Jehovah, yod heh vav -Heh. And they, the Bible codes that he makes, that he produces, 
brings praise to Elohim. There's false code searchers out there right now. They're reading your palm. If you'll pay him twenty dollars, you'll find your name in there in the in the Bible code and tell you about yourself. Satanic. That does not bring glory to Elohim. That brings glory to the guy with twenty bucks. Wickedness. Proverbs twenty five, or twenty four five. Let's read what that one says. Proverbs twenty four and verse five says, a wise man is strong, yea, a man of knowledge increases strength. God has chosen a man of knowledge and wisdom to do this, and those of us who see the hand of God in this are wise and are made strong by the Bible code. The codes make us strong. The codes give us conquering strength. The codes make us go, aha, at what the devil's up to, right? As in tonight's whole sermon, and the snake venom, and the planners of evil, the planners of wicked, those who rule the world, they're doing it for financial gain, and God's just going to drop a bunch of fire bombs on their financial gain and ruin everything about them. Then God's going to show up and look Obama in the face and say, destroy, and he's going to die. And Jesus is going to stomp his dead corpse. He's going to look into the camera via satellite and tell all the rulers of the world, I'm coming for you next. Everybody that wasn't at the battle, I'm coming for you next. And there's going to be a 75-day killing spree and consecration time. And they're all going to be shaking in their boots, shaking in their dragon venom. The mark of the beast they took. Okay, what's the other verse here? The other verse is Psalm 118. That's the very middle chapter of the entire Bible. Psalm 118.8 is the very middle verse. It says, you better put your confidence in the Lord and not people. That's the middle verse of the entire Bible. You better do all things for God and not people. Psalm 118, 27 and 28. Psalm 118, 27 and 28 says, God is the Lord, which hath shown us light. The Bible code is light. God gives more light to those who love the light he's already given them. We appreciate the plain text, Lord God, you're so awesome. We appreciate you. We appreciate the, the Shroud of Turin, the light that blew through that on your resurrection. This is resurrection weekend, Lord. We love your light. We love everything about you. We love everything you've shown us. And he'll look at you and say, you want some more? You want some more light? And he shows us the codes. Because there is a fella who's working day and night skipping the codes. The skip laborer of Jehovah. Sean Mitchell bringing us these codes. Blessed is he, this is 26. I cometh in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you out of the house of the Lord. God is the Lord, which hath shown us light. Bind the sacrifices with the cords, even the horns of the altar. That's Jesus. As they took the sacrifice and they bound him to the horn so he wouldn't move, the horns of the altar, the corners of the altar. And then they'd slit his throat. Jesus was bound to that cross. And he is the light of the world. And the more we follow him, the more we're in love with him, the more we understand the DNA spirals in us and the image of God and what he's wanting to carve out into us through his word. We love his word. We apply his word. When the word shows us we're wrong, we straighten that out and say, Lord, Holy Spirit, help us, man. And the Lord shows us the direction we need to go instead. And we say, Holy Spirit, God, help us, man. Please help us to walk holy and righteous in you. And he obliges. He loves that prayer. And he gives us more light. Let's go through that again. It says, the revelation of Jesus, simple salvation, rest and comfort. In the middle of that is Mitchell. Below that is Sean, the Bible code, the skip laborer of Jehovah. Oh, they praise Elohim. Every one of these Bible codes praise God. The Trinity is Elohim. That's all three, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. They are all praised through the Bible codes of Sean Mitchell. Then we have those passages. That was Proverbs 24, 5 and Psalm 118. 27 and 28, where we see the light, the light, the light, and we see Jesus being tied to the horns of the altar here at Passover week, unleavened bread week, resurrection week. And we say, thank you, Lord, for being the light of the world. And what happened, man? What happened? The light blew the soldiers away in the garden, the prayer. All he had to say was, I am. Boom! Blew them all on their backs. 
Judas kissed the door of heaven and went straight to hell. I'm going to encourage you to take the light of the gospel, the light of the word, to understand who Jesus is and believe fully in him. Place your entire faith in him. Understanding that you are no good without him and you need him only. And he's your everything. And believe in that truth. Believe and be saved. Check out Sean's code. Be, be looking for it tomorrow night. It's going to be a doozy. Guys, I love you, man. Aren't you thankful that your Savior is alive and well and he resurrected from the dead? He's the first fruit so we can also be raised, so we can also go to heaven and get our glorified bodies as he got his glorified body? You looking forward to that? Less than two months, I believe. It's going to be on the Feast of Pentecost. I love you, man. God bless you guys. We'll see you Sunday.